Hello math class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson one of the fourth unit. Uh, it is titled Exploring Obtuse Angles and it is a continuation from unit three. So we just had a quiz after unit three and we will have a test covering both units after section 4.4. .4. Uh, what we're really going to focus on in this unit is we're going to focus on using the sine law and the cosine law to solve more problems. Uh, we are going to, in the first couple of lessons, learn something new about the sine law and we're going to apply that uh, throughout. So there's always uh, more to learn about each law and that's what we're going to do. It's going to be a continuation of those. So uh, one definition we have here, an oblique triangle, a triangle that does not contain a 90 degree angle. That's what we've been uh, working with um, in the last unit as well. Generally, they did not have a right angle. We had to make a right angle for them. So now these ones are definitely not going to uh, contain a right angle either. Uh, this table here, so explore the math. Joe, some guy named Joe, investigated the values of the primary trig ratios for obtuse angles. So he used a calculator and he determined the value of sine of 100 uh, degrees and sine of 80 degrees and he found them to both be 0.9848. So that's what he's done here. Uh, he's taken the sine of 100 and put the value and then the sine of 180 minus 100 so that was 80, the sine of 80 is the same thing. Looks like there's a line missing, but I have it on my screen. Anyway, there should be a line in here and a line in here. You probably have that in your booklet. So if you were to do, actually, let's just do this real quick. If we were to do the sine of 110. Let's see. So we've got the sine of 110. This isn't on, there we go. Sine of 110, I'll close my bracket. Find that to be 0.9397. 9397. And if I do uh, the sine of 70, uh, the complement of that, sine of 70, 0.9397, I get the exact same number. Okay, so that is a pattern in the sine ratios. I'll show you my diagram here. There we go. So in my diagram, I've done this already, and you can check these in your calculator as well, but the sine of 130 and the sine of 50 are both exactly the same. Okay, so uh, the sine of a number and its complement are the same. You can see that there is a pattern with cosine as well. You've got the cosine of theta, uh, the cosine of 100, was negative 0.1736 and the cosine of 80 or its complement is the positive version of that. It is the same for tan. Okay, So there is a pattern um, based on uh, what angles and what trigonometric ratios we're using and you can see that with cos and tan you can differentiate between which angles it is. But let's say you were doing in your calculator, you wanted to do the sine of 0.9397, uh, the sine inverse. So sine inverse of 0.9397 tells us that it's 70 degrees. But how do we know that it doesn't actually mean 110? Because that number applies to both 70 and 110. And that's really what we're trying to get at here. Uh, let me draw a little picture. Uh, when we have a triangle that looks like this, we have a line here and we have this angle. Let's say that it's 60. We can draw, I'm going to draw the same thing here. It's going to look as close to the same as it can. How do we know that the triangle that we're dealing with uh, doesn't look like this? It 
could. Or the triangle could look like this. If this is an angle uh, here, 110, and this is the angle 70, both would give us uh, the same answer. Both would come from the sine of 0.9397. So what we're going to do in uh, these lessons and throughout is we're going to explore how this can affect some of our calculations and how sometimes we uh, don't really actually know which triangle it is, so we have to um, work out both of them. So, uh, the question below, and you might have already seen it on the screen, is describe the pattern that we observe. So some patterns that we observed in the trigonometric ratios. And again, if you haven't copied them down yet, please go back uh, and copy them down. But these are some of the patterns um, that we've observed here. So cos and tan have the same number but opposite signs. Negative 0.342 and its complement was positive. Negative 0.6428 and its complement was positive and it is the same even though my writing isn't super great, it is the same for both cos and tan. So they were the same number, but they were opposite signs. Um, let's see. Let's see. The most important one, well, we'll put a star by here, is that the sine ratios are the same for an angle. and its complement. So uh, cosine, we can tell what angle it should be based on if it's positive or negative, but sine, we cannot. So we are going to use this, um, this fact, that sine ratios are the same for an angle and its complement uh, in the next uh, couple of lessons with regards to the sine law. So I just wanna kind of prepare you for that and let you know that that is what we're doing. We are trying to find out um, going to be trying to find out which triangle uh, we are dealing with and if we don't know we'll be having to do both of them so let's get down to just a few examples of dealing with these ratios a little bit further we'll do some examples and then there's some problems for you to do that are very similar so example one here which of the following equations are valid give reasons for our choices so for a I'm looking at the sine of 25 and the sine of 65. Uh, those are not complements. They are complements of 90, but that's not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with complements of 180. So I would say that sine of 25 and sine of 65 would not be equal. Um, not equal because um, they are not complements of 180. And we could try them in our calculator just to find out to make sure sine of 25 equals 0.4226. Let's remember that. Sine of 65, 0.9096. So those are definitely not the same. That has been confirmed. Let's check out D, which is right beside it. We have sine of 122 and sine of 58. Those are complements of 185 or 180. So I would say that those will be comp uh, those will be equal. Uh, will be equal because they are complements of 180. And let's find out. Let's do that here. Sine of 122 equals 0 0.8480. So I'm to write that down so that I remember. And then the sine of 58, 0 0.8480. Okay, so those are the same. 
So we were right. Uh, with D, because they are complements of 180, they will be equal. Let's go to the next example here. Calculate each ratio to four decimal places and predict another angle that will have an equal or opposite. So equal, which means the same sign, or opposite, which is the opposite sign, positive or negative trigonometric ratio, and check our prediction. So for A, let's continue here. Uh, for the sine of 15, let's calculate it. Okay. Sine, oops, sine of 15. 0.2588, so 0.2588, and I would predict that the same trig ratio uh, would be its complement uh, of 180, so that would be 165. So I would say the one, sine of 165 should equal that as well. Let's find out, sine of 165 equals 0.2588, yes, that's what we're looking for. Five, eight, eight. So we did it correctly. Let's see if we can do the last one here on the bottom. We have C, which is tan of 35. Let's do the tangent of 35. I've been hitting a sign too much. Let's do tan of 35. 0 0.7002. Zero two. It's tan. So I would think that it's negative. Negative. 0 0.7002 would be the tan of its complement, and its complement would be 145. So let's check that out. I already wrote it down, so I hope I'm correct. We have tan of 145, close my bracket, equals negative 0 0.7002, which is what I wrote here. So we did it. Um, we predicted the correct angles. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, yeah, you can send me an email if you see me in class. Um, we can do it there. And thanks so much for watching, everyone. Check out the key points. And definitely do as many practice problems as you can. See you soon.